it is really, really cold out here. Looks like some kind of house. Could someone be living there? Hello? Is anyone here? Hmm, doesn't sound like it. The Rest of My Life by Julius McQuaid. So once I get her attention by saying her name, I can give her commands. Ability to sort objects by scent. If she has an object in her mouth, she'll sniff, then drop the object near another object that has the same scent. Pine Vale Hospital. Hmm, maybe I can use Isis and her incredible sense of smell to figure out who owns the notebook I found outside. All I have to do is get something from each of the people at the lodge, something that each of them has touched, then let Isis figure out which of their scents matches the scent on the notebook. <sighs> Isis, stay. Down. Paw. Isis, down. Paw, go. That looks like a Geiger counter. What a weird thing to be chewing on. This measures radioactivity. I wonder if Isis found it outside somewhere or in here. Wonder what this is. Looks like there's a phone number on it. This indentation looks just like the one on that plaque in the lodge where that missing Rex bone used to be. Warm again.
the office of Dr. Nikki Sabatini, professor of geology at the University of Alberta, Camrose. The sound of the beep. No, no, disregard all that. I'm here. Who's this? My name is Nancy Drew. I'm staying at the Icicle Creek Lodge, and I recently came across some kind of device that had your phone number on it. Describe the device. Well, it has a spike on one end of it, and... Well, I'll be darned. Where did you say you found it? Well, actually, this, I mean, someone's uh, dog was using it as a chew toy. She must have found it outside somewhere. You know what it is? It's a geophone. Someone stole a whole crate of them from me when I was out on Skookum Ridge not too long ago. What's a geophone? If you stick it in the ground, a geophone will detect seismic waves and turn them into electrical signals, which are then transmitted to a computer so they can be recorded and eventually interpreted. It lets geologists like me make maps of mineral deposits and such without doing any digging. See, I was preparing to do a subsurface survey of the area using reflection seismology. I set up camp, stored all my equipment in a trailer, went into town for supplies, and when I came back, the trailer had been broken into and all my geophones were gone. I was going to be the first person to do a full geological survey of the Icicle Creek drainage and the ridges surrounding it. Got grant money and everything. The person who ripped off my equipment sure screwed that up for me. If I ever get my hands on him... Oh! You have no idea who it was? It was snowing, so there were no tracks. So I don't know if he came by car or snowmobile or on foot or what. I'm assuming it was a guy, because he only took the geophones, so he must have known what they were and how to use them. And since not that many women are into explosives... Explosives? The seismic waves that geophones detect are man-made. You detonate something on the surface of the ground, and the concussion creates seismic waves which bounce off different geological features differently, depending on the impedance of the feature. The reflected waves are what the geophones detect and transmit. So, to put the geophones to use, you need to blow things up? Correct. That's interesting. So, if someone were looking for valuable mineral deposits, they might use geophones to do it? If someone had the technical expertise, yes. Although reflection seismology is more typically employed to locate deposits of hydrocarbons, like oil and gas. What types of mineral deposits are likely to be found around the Icicle Creek drainage? All kinds of deposits. Silver, lead, uranium, molybdenum. I love saying that word, molybdenum. I think that's why I became a geologist. Just so I'd have a reason to say molybdenum. Anyway, if you come across any more of my geophones, or anything that would indicate who stole them, Please, please, please let me know. I will. Good. What do you know about dinosaur bones? Precious little, I'm afraid. I know it's possible to find good specimens in Alberta, particularly in your area. But beyond that, paleontology's not really my thing. And all my paleo pals are currently off digging in the dirt on the other side of the world. So I'm afraid I can't refer you to anyone either. Are dinosaur bones good for anything? Other than studying? If you're a scientist, no. But because they're obviously rare, a lot of people collect them. In fact, I understand there's a pretty big black market for them. Black market? You mean people pay money for dinosaur bones? People pay big money for them. I came across a Geiger counter. What can you tell me about them? The closer you get to a source of radiation, the more they click. They've been around for about a hundred years. They're portable. Do you know what range of radiation is unsafe? Assuming the Geiger counter is measuring radiation in the environment and not in, say, a nuclear power plant, I wouldn't worry about it. When it comes to exposure to radiation, even the experts can't agree on what's safe and unsafe. And the fact is, you're exposed to radiation every single day. You can't avoid it. You absorb cosmic rays from space, ingest carbon-14 in food, inhale radon from the ground, you even get a dose of radiation whenever you watch TV, albeit a teeny tiny one. Plus, it's a cumulative thing. Is it okay to get your arm x-rayed? Sure. Is it okay to get your arm x-rayed every day for a year? Probably not a good idea. But will it positively increase your risk of cancer? Depends on how much other radiation you're routinely exposed to. And your health habits. And your genetic makeup. In other words, if I'm getting a high reading on my Geiger counter, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm in imminent danger? Exactly. Unless the object that's giving you the high reading is labeled plutonium, of course. You would definitely be up a creek then. I appreciate your taking the time to talk to me. One more thing. All of 
my geophones were hardwired to transmit at 990 kilohertz. So if you find any kind of receiver tuned to that frequency, check it out. Because it could very well belong to the thief. Bye! Pinevale Hospital, Nurse Blake speaking. Hi, my name's Nancy Drew. I'm trying to locate a man named Julius McQuaid. I think he may have been treated there on Christmas Eve. Oh, yes, Julius McQuaid. I remember him well. Was he a relative, dear? Was? You mean he passed away? Yes, dear. Viral pneumonia. As I recall, we admitted him, and he was gone less than 24 hours later. Well, I wasn't a relative, and I didn't really know him. We had kind of a mutual friend. From his appearance, it looked as if he'd spent the last several years holed up somewhere in the wilderness. That's why I remember him. I felt sorry for him, living all alone like that. Actually, he wasn't alone. He was with our mutual friend. Well, that's good to hear. You weren't able to locate any next of kin? No, I'm afraid we weren't. When he came in, all he had were the clothes on his back and the wallet nothing. We turned his clothes over to the authorities along with his remains. But last I heard, they weren't able to locate any relatives either. I'm sure by now he's been cremated. Well, thank you for the information. Sorry the news couldn't have been better. Goodbye, dear. How can I help you? That's all for now. Come back any time. What you need? I'll get out of your hair now. Good.
I feel warmer already. Go outside in sub-zero temperatures? I don't think so. I'm only supposed to use this door if it's an emergency. 